Welcome everyone to Just Barely Awake, where my chronically tired self talks about anything pop culture, movies, TV shows, video games, anything that catch my interest. I'm AJ Agrest, and I'm going to be talking about Miraculous Awakening, the movie, or Miraculous the movie, or Ladybug and Cat Noir the movie, or all the uh, there's like a bunch of names for this movie but i am a a little bit about myself i have watched miraculous ladybug um i watched seasons one through four i have seen some stuff from season five but i haven't watched season five because i just can't stomach the show anymore I can't, I can't take the show anymore. Like, the writing, the back and forth, the regression, it's just so annoying and frustrating at this point that I basically have given up on the show. I'm ready to, like, move on. And from what I've seen of season five, like, from the clips and the, and the plot points that have happened in season five, I'm like, yeah, this was a good decision. It really wasn't worth the effort after a point. But now we have Miraculous the Movie, which, as I understand it, is Jeremy Zag's interpretation of the property. Like, it's basically, like, fan fiction with a budget, if if it's, if I could give it an accurate description, which explains some of the differences in how, like, the powers work and everything, and why the characters are a little characterized differently, which is a very welcome um change i mean there are definitely a lot of things that have been frustrating about miraculous and i'm very happy that jeremy was like yeah no let's toss that shit out and let's change it to something a little less dumb and stupid uh but yeah i mean okay let me give a little summary first basically miraculous this movie and basically the show as well is about two French kids. One is Marinette Dupin Chang, the other is Adrian Agrest. They both uh get these accessories. Adrian gets the ring of the black cat. Le- um, Marinette gets the earrings of the ladybug, and the black cat miraculous gives um the power of destruction while the ladybug miraculous gives the power of creation and together they are called to save paris from hawk moth um and his evil plan and schemes um hawk moth is he is well he is Gabriel Agres, who is Adrian's father, and he possesses the Moth Miraculous, so he's also a Miraculous um, holder. And that's pretty much the plot of the both the show and the movie. Um, you know, the two heroes have to stop him, and in the show, it drags out. I mean, they literally just succeeded in stopping him in season five, and it's in the most... Ugh, the way that unfolded. I don't even want to think about the show, honestly. Give, give me more Jeremy Zag Miraculous. Like, I would totally take that over whatever the fuck Thomas Estruff is doing over there. But let's focus on the positive, which is this movie. I really, really liked it. Um, Ever since I heard that this movie was being made, I was excited. I was like, oh, Miraculous, a movie. Um... I forgot when this was announced, but I think it was still back when I was still watching Miraculous at all. Um, and then when I heard that, when I saw the art style, like what the movie actually looked like, I was like, oh, this looks really good. And then when I heard that it was basically a an interpretation, a personal interpretation of the property, like it wasn't exactly going to be following the, the, the show and their rules and concepts um one-to-one i was like that's actually kind of interesting to see someone else's like what someone else would do with the property if um they had the inspiration to and and it's been like delayed like multiple times every time it got delayed i was like oh you know i'm guessing this movie is just never gonna come out honestly um but it did finally um when did it come out was it june 30th was it the end of june i think so uh, and I've been wanting to do a, a an episode about this because I've been waiting for this for a while. 
I really love the art style. I was surprised to hear that it was a musical. I was not expecting that because, I mean, I think there's only like one musical episode in the show. Like, like, I just wasn't expecting it to be a musical. That was the last thing I thought. I thought it was just going to be like a freaking movie, but it was a musical. And the musical elements of the show work, work pretty, I mean, not in the show, of the movie, God, of the movie work pretty well. Like, I like, there's like three songs that I really, really, really like. And then I think there's like three other songs in there that are, you know, decent and good. I don't think any song in this is really bad. So that's good. You don't want, you know, the majority of your songs and musical to be bad. And I think Jeremy Zag actually wrote some of the songs, which is interesting. I didn't know he was a musical guy. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really know much about the guy in general. I know he owns like the company or whatever like isn't it like called zag studios or zag tunes or something like that and that's what miraculous is like under but i think he, he i think he apparently wrote some of the songs for the musical um we also have i believe the french singers names are lou and kim who sing the theme the theme song for the show and they also are the singing voices for Marinette and and Adrian, which I was surprised about because I think they're the only two, like Chris, the Christina V plays Marinette and she can sing, but Bryce Pappenbrook I don't think he can sing from what I can recall. But I think they're the only two characters who aren't being like who aren't being sung by their English VAs. I watched this in English. I was going to watch it in French, but because I didn't want to hear, <laughs> I didn't want to hear the main character sing, but it's actually the, the, the main French singer. So I was like, oh, okay. But I think they're the only two. Like I, like Tiki has a song, but I think that's her English VA. Uh, Hawk Moth has a song and that's, that's definitely his English VA. We're going to get to that song. That's amazing. And who else has a song? I think that's it. I think it's just Tiki, Marin, Tiki, Hawk Moth, and then the two leads, Marina and Adrian. I think they're the only ones who have songs. I think. I'm trying to remember. But yeah, so I was surprised that they only seem to replace them two. But probably because Lou and Kim, again, I'm not even sure there's their names, but we're just going to refer to them as Lou and Kim. But I'm pretty sure, but Lou and Kim, they're pretty, like, well known in the Miraculous community, at least on the French side, I know, because they've been, like, um, they, they've been singing the, like I said, the theme song, um, since the beginning, I believe. So I guess maybe Jeremy just wanted to really put them in the movie somewhere, even if it, um, even if their voices don't exactly match the 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 English VAs, which they don't. Like, it, it's a little jarring, but I'm not too mad about it. It's a little jarring, but I'm not really mad about it. Because, like I said, I didn't really want to hear the English VAs sing. Um, I wouldn't have mind Christina V, but I, I wasn't really interested in hearing Bryce sing. So I was a little, like, hesitant about that. But since I already, I've, I've listened to... Um, Lou and Kim sing and they have beautiful voices. So even if the they don't really have a voice match, I'm it, it's it's jarring, but it doesn't like ruin my immersion in the film. So that's good. Um some differences between the movie and the show that are very welcome. The Kwame powers. So the Kwamis are the little genies that are that live inside the miraculous that are summoned from the miraculous accessories and in the show i'm pretty sure miraculous fans would listen to this i don't think there's anyone who's watched this movie who maybe not most people who watch this movie who haven't seen the show or something like that so i'm, so I'm probably not going to go over everything in detail um but in the show after they use their Oh yeah, each miraculous has a specific power that's unique to like them. Like in general, they all have like endurance, enhanced endurance, agility, um, super strength, and everything like that. Uh, but um, they each also have like a special unique power unique to each type of miraculous. Um, and in the show, after they use that special power, then they would like detransform from their superhero outfits. Like, it would force them to detransform. Like, they would have, like, a, I think it's a five-minute timer 
and then they would be forced out of their superhero form, which I always hated. It was always used as a plot device to force the characters away from each other and to keep the identities a secret. Uh, I never really liked that, honestly. Because they honestly just was an excuse to drag things out over and over and over again. Like, they literally just wrapped up their first arc after five seasons. And if you, and I'm telling you, it did not need to be five seasons. They dragged that shit out. But anyway, let's not focus on that. Um, yeah, so the, there's no like timer after their powers. Granted, they don't use their, um, their powers until like the very end but even after they use their powers they still don't they're not forced out of their superhero form which i really like um what else is different oh yeah cat noir's staff it teleports to him i don't think it does that unless yeah it doesn't do that in the show i don't think um ladybug's yo-yo it kind of like beeps and is a little sentient because it like moves on its own which i thought was a uh, pretty interesting um, oh, yeah, when there's danger in Paris, they they have, like, a bat signal type of thing in their Miraculous. Like, it beeps to alert them, like, hey, there's danger in the city. Get your ass out there. Uh, what else is different? Oh, yeah, the um, ma- Ladybug's power, she kind of has, like, a two-in-one power. It's called Lucky Charm. And the Lucky Charm is when she would throw up her yo-yo into the air and say, Lucky Charm! And then it would give her a, a random object that she would use to like solve the problem in this weird, convoluted um, way. And then after she solved the problem, she would throw the object into the air and say, Miraculous Ladybug! And then it would basically reset everything to status quo. Like if something was broken, it would repair it. And then that's how, and then that's when the episode would usually end. There is no miraculous, well, there's no lucky charm in this movie, which I actually really like. The whole thing about Marinette receiving some random objects so that she can, like, ridiculously and unnecessarily complicatedly, <laughs> like, insert it into the problem and be like, oh, I have a bazooka. What am I supposed to do with this? Like, literally, it happened before, and then you see, like, she really only just le- needed the the scope, I think, on the, on the, like, the, the, the snipe gun or whatever that she got that one episode. Sometimes she'll get, like, a mirror or, like, a, a, a pedal from, from, like, a bike. It's really just some random shit that she has to, like, insert into the situation ridiculously. And I was never really a fan of that. Um, I don't think I ever really hated it, but it was just so ridiculous. You know what I mean? So there's none of that. She doesn't have the lucky charm thing. But she does have the macro- miraculous ladybug power. It works a little differently. Um, she's able to like, I mean, her power is creation. So she is able to like repair everything to the, not necessarily the status quo because the status quo definitely does change in this movie, but she's able to repair everything after like Paris has been destroyed and after, um, she's able to put everything back together, which is very nice. And Cat, Cat Noir's ability is still the same. He still has a cataclysm, but, but it looked really cool in the movie though. It was kind of like this black ooze that like destroyed the Eiffel Tower. It was very cool. But anyway, so that's the differences with the powers. Um, now let's, let's talk about like the rest of the movie. Um, the movie actually starts off with a song like right away. Um, it, it's a Marinette song. It's basically about her, you know, wanting to follow her dreams of being a fashion designer, I believe, and just kind of like fit in and stuff like that. But she can't because. Um, she's, like, clumsy and anxious, and she doesn't have any friends. So that's basically what her first song is about. And it's alright. It's decent. Um, I didn't love it. It's definitely not in the top three. Um, there are top three songs in here that I really, really liked, and I'll get to, I'll point them out when we get to them. Um, but yeah, this first song was okay. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting a song so freaking soon, but we got it. And, oh yeah. Then she goes to school, and then Chloe's there. And can I just say, I really do love Chloe in this movie. Like, she's so, like, over-the-top and ridiculous as a bully. Um, And I like how the progression of that happened, where, like, in the beginning, she's like, Marinette spills coffee on her shirt, her designer shirt. And then she's, like, about to, like, strangle Marinette. And then now, throughout the movie, she's, like, hassling Marinette because... 
she's also like looking at Adrian and she's upset about that. She just wants to like be mean to Marinette. And eventually Marinette does stand up to her and like brings her down a peg. And then at the end of the movie, you see like Chloe is like, Hey Marinette, you know, enjoy this evening because next year bullying is back on. And you see Marinette's like, well, I'm looking forward to it kind of thing. And then she leaves. I just like the progression of that. Like, it seems like there's a, like a rivalry, like it turned into a bullying and then Marinette kind of reversed the scales a little bit, like, not reversed the scales, balanced out the scales between them. And then it now it seems like there's, like, a mutual rivalry going on. Like, I could totally see um, Chloe getting the Be Miraculous in a potential sequel situation. But yeah, I really like Chloe. I found her very funny. Uh, Marinette and Adrian's uh, first meeting, um, if you're familiar with the show, they met... Um, um, they had a kind of rocky start because Marinette thought Adrian was like being mean to her. But eventually, you know, it, they're leaving for school. It's raining outside. Adrian turns around, gives her an umbrella. There's thunder in the background. They touch fingertips. Marinette gets the umbrella and then she's like swooning all over him. And that's how that starts. Here, it's uh, very different. Adrian is just like in the library brooding. And then Marinette, um, uh, she falls after like looking at him. Uh, and then he, a bunch of books fall in her head, and then he picks her up, the whole hand thing. It's still, um, in there, the whole hand touching thing. No thunder, though. Uh, he picks her up. You see Marina is, like, just awestruck, and her hands are shaking. And then she turns around and is, like, wanting to talk to him, but he's already gone. And he's like, wow, that girl's so weird. So it's, it's very, very different. But again, I don't hate it. <laughs> Like, I remember, I think the origin episodes of the show actually happened at the end of the season. Uh, so you don't even really get that notable moment that is so pivotal to show in the beginning. It's all the way at the end. There's a little bit of a deb- debate about that or whether that was a good decision to put it at the end instead of the beginning. But I'm not really getting into it because I don't really care. But I really like this. I like how Adrian is kind of like a little off put by her. But still nice, because Adrian is a nice person, but it's a little, like, like this girl's kind of kooky. And I do like how you see Marinette was about to, like, talk to him after she, like, s- quickly snapped out of her, you know, boy crush. Because a thing in the show is that Marinette is just incapable of talking to Adrian, like, for, like, what, two seasons it was? I forgot when she finally started. Like, it was, like, she was just physically incapable of having a conversation with him and it was just so annoying because it's like i get it you have a crush on this boy but like come on girl we also see gabriel um in the beginning of the movie i like how uh i think gabriel's first scene is him walking through um like a room full of um his designers because gabriel's a fashion designer and you see he's walking to a room of all his like employees working on outfits and i like how he passed by enough it's like uh nah, remove the sash and trim it like a half an inch and then it'll be perfect because i don't know if we really saw much of that because there's a plot point in the show where gabriel hasn't made any public appearances since his wife died like a year before the show starts so that's the thing. But I like how here he is out and about. He is doing stuff. He is in public. And he is doing his job. And we get to see a little bit of that. And he's not like some kind of like hermit or recluse or something like that. I mean, he's still withdrawn, obviously. But he's not like some kind of uh, depressed rat holed up in his house or anything like that. And you see um, you see Gabriel. He does have the, um, the Moth Miraculous. And then he summons Nuru, which is the little genie for his specific miraculous. And and the uh, Nuru says the ladybug and cat noir miraculous um can only be summoned during times of chaos, which I think is interesting. I don't know if that was also the case in the show. I don't remember. But that line did stick out to me, so I thought I would mention it. And I like how here you see I like how they kind of fix Gabriel's character. We're going to get into more how they fixed him. But I like how here he's kind of debating. He's like, the thing about it is that the the black cat and the ladybug miraculous, when they're combined, they you're able to form, you're able to be granted a wish. um, and Any wish, really. You can wish for literally anything. And he wants that wish in order to bring back his dead wife, Emily. 
And he has this miraculous that is capable of um, creating chaos if misused. And I like how you see him kind of debating over it because obviously he doesn't necessarily want to be a villain or a bad guy, but he also desperately wants his wife back. So I like how you actually see him debating it because in the in the in the show he's pretty like he's pretty evil like he kind of like relishes it kind of thing and he also kind of mistreats his son as well. So while well, here it's not so much well at least I don't think <laughs> he does have a villain song but you know. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, it's not so much that, oh, I'm, I'm kind of loving being a villain. I'm kind of like having fun with this. It's, it's like, I have nothing left to lose. So let me give into the darkness and let me cause this chaos because in the end, I'll be able to bring back my wife. Um, and we can be a family again with Adrian. Like, it's not like, ha 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 ha, ha ha, I am a villain, and I, and even though, like, he is doing it for his wife in the show, but it also seems like he's actually really enjoying being, like, this, um, super villain in the show. So, I like how here it's a little, it's, 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 his motivation seems a little bit more, like, this is the only option I really have, and I don't want to necessarily, because they show him kind of contemplating it, too. There's, like, a, a short little scene where you see he's like debating over whether or not he should even go down this path at all, which I really like. So, so yeah, so he's the villain for the movie and, you know, he turns into Hawk Moth and um, his powers is that he can like take this butterfly and imbue it with like his powers, which are able to like seek out negative emotions and imbue those people with, uh, with superpowers of with whatever he chooses, and then they pretty much work for him, like his minions. In the show, the 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 butterfly is called an Akuma. The Akuma would go into a specific object that would be on the person, and as long as that person, as long as that object was intact, the person would remain like possessed, basically. Um, but there's no such thing like that in the show. They seem, it, it seems like the Akuma goes, like, just straight into the person, through, like, their chest or whatever, instead of into a, an object that the, the heroes would eventually have to find out, oh, like, where is the Akuma? And then they would break it, and then that would temporarily break, um, Hawk Moth's hold over the, the person, and then they would have to, like, capture the butterfly and stuff like that. Um, that whole, like, find the object that Akuma is, it's not in the movie which um, I do like as well. The capture the Akuma part, that's still in it, because Ladybug also has the power to, like, purify the butterfly or whatever, like, get rid of all its evil, evil energy so it doesn't possess anyone else. Um, but the whole find the object that the Akuma thing is, it's not in the show. Uh, oh, yeah. Luca is in this movie. Like, it's just a cameo appearance. He's not, like, any substantial role or anything. But I was actually surprised. I wasn't expecting Luca to be here. He's, like, one of the class, one of the school students in, in the movie. Cause he, I don't think he was a school student in the, in the show. I don't believe he was. And also Kagami is not in this movie. As far as I can see, like I was looking for her. I was like, is Kagami anywhere in this movie? But I never found her. Um, you see all of her other notable classmates, but I never found Kagami. So I guess she's not in Jeremy Zag's version of, of Miraculous, which is fine. I mean, cause, I mean, Kagami and Luka's, like, whole existence was for a specific purpose to drag out the, the romance in the show. But, you know, it was just kind of nice to see that cameo of Luka, because I was not expecting him to be in the movie. Because he doesn't really, I don't think he comes in until, is it season three that he makes his first appearance? I forget. Either season two or season three, right? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I think season two. But yeah, they're not there initially. They're newer characters. Ah, uh, Master... Oh yeah, Master Fu. Master Fu actually kind of... it. Op the movie opens with Master Fu telling, like, a general description of, like, the miraculous and a little bit of the plot of the movie. And I love how in the movie he kind of comes off as a crazy old man. He's, like, kind of senile. 
and this is like over dramatic and everything like that for good reason but still in the in the movie i mean in the show he's more he's more like wise and you know like your typical asian sensei type of character but here he's come kind of comes off more as like a crazy old man Who's talking the sense, but it's, like, very crazy that you want to, like, run away. Like, Marinette is literally trying to get away from this dude in the beginning, which I think I thought was pretty funny. I also like how the Miraculouses were delivered to their holders. Like, I like how Adrian just found, like, a like a cat in his in his house. And then when the cat left, it left behind a Miraculous. And the same thing with Marinette. She went to, like, this room, and there was a ladybug, and they guided her to, like, under this table. And then under the table was the the earrings. I thought that was very... It just helps to make the whole Kwame, Genie, granting powers thing a little bit more magical. I mean, it's already inherently magical, but it just helps to make it more, I guess, mystical in a way. Like, there's this, like, ethereal nature to it as well. And when Marinette first puts on the earrings and first transforms, uh, and first transforms into Ladybug, she act. There's actually a song here, which is in one of my top three songs in the movie. Um, it's sung by Tiki and Marinette a little bit too, I think. Um, and it's to the tune of the theme song, which I was very surprised about, and I really like that. Like it's like da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Obviously, with it, it's with different lyrics and everything. But I, I, I remember I was listening to it. And I was like, "Hold on a second, I recognize this tune." So I thought that was very clever on um, Jeremy Zag's part. Um, and it really, it's a really good song. I really like it. I would totally listen to it again. And and it's actually sung pretty well. I think it is Tiki's English VA, and she's actually doing a pretty good job. I like how Tiki is also like so gung ho about the whole superhero thing. But she's like, "Oh my gosh, you're gonna face death every single day while fighting monsters and being with your partner. And it's gonna be so exhilarating." Like I like how Tiki is just like so into it. Um, I don't remember her. No, I don't think she was that enthusiastic about the whole thing. In um in the show, but I like how here she's kind of like very, very, very lively as a, as a genie. Um, and you know, they have their first mission. You see, uh, Ladybug. I'm going to refer to her as Ladybug now. There's a whole thing. And then like the, in the show community where Ladybug and Cat Noir are like separate entities almost compared to Marinette and Adrian, but we'll get into that when we get into the whole love square, um, that whole mess. But, you know, their first mission goes well. And a thing that I really, really like that that's a good change in this movie is, like, I like how different the characters' personalities are compared to the movie. Like, Adrian, like, Adrian himself, he's a little bit more gloomier, a little, a little bit more depressed. Um, in the show, he wasn't allowed to go to school at first. Like, his father, Gabriel, wanted to keep him kind of locked inside his house. And, um... And in the origin episodes, he actually sneaks away to go to school so that he can, like, have friends and interact with the other kids and be a normal kid. While here in the movie, you see Adrian is going to school, but he himself is distancing himself from other people. See, he has his his earbuds in. He's, like, alone in the library. Um, he doesn't really, he's not really enthusiastic about hanging out with his friend Nino. And you see, he he personally is withdrawing himself from other people. So no, I really like that. You see Gabriel, he himself is withdrawing himself from his son. Um, like he's still out and about in society as his fashion designer self. Like he don't see him, the whole thing about him being stuck in his house that's not present in the movie. And you see Adrian, he's also out and about and, you know, in the world, but he's not really connecting with other people because of the death of his mother. And he's kind of just, he's not really bothering to connect or talk or hang out with anybody he just kind of wants to be alone in his his feelings and his thoughts and then when you see when he becomes cat noir you see he kind of like it's like a boy's dream come true to become a superhero and he's so enthusiastic about it and then he also has a new partner as he gets the fights crime with so you see all that energy um that that does exist within adrian kind of come out um now that he gets to be this different person and the same thing is like true with marinette like her she's very different from the show like the whole she's clumsy and like anxious both in the show and the movie but in 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 like i said in the show she's like so 
like so anxious to the point like she can't even talk to Adrian and she's always stumbling over everything. She always like hiding from him and everything. She's also like a very big stalker and creep in the show. It's so annoying and so frustrating. It's like very uncomfortable, honestly. She's like has his schedule and like kisses his statue. It's just ugh. Like I hate the characterization of Marinette in the show. It's so ugh, so weird. Um, but yes, but the whole thing about her being clumsy and a magnet for bad luck, that's, that's in the show and in the movie, but, and then when she becomes Marinette, um, when she's able to, like, fully embrace her superhero identity, you see her gain that confidence, and then compared to, like, the show, like, in the show, she's, like, a completely different person when she becomes Marinette, um, but that never really bleeds into the, to, like, her normal, civilian identity until like much later into the series like it takes like i would say maybe season three is when you really start to see a change i think it's been a while since i've seen the show but is where you really start to see her at least be at least somewhat comfortable with socializing with humans on any big level it's so ridiculous (laughs) but i like how in the movie you see that Marinette's ladybug identity and her confidence in being that hero, it does bleed into her normal life. You see her do get less clumsy and you do see her being more uh, confident and around Adrian and her friends and in herself. Well, in the show, it kind of took like a long while to see any, any notable change. And another thing I like also is the late noir um dynamic as well like in the show especially particularly season one it always felt that ladybug didn't really like cat noir as well and then cat noir himself came off so strong with his feelings he was always constantly pining after ladybug everything like that and it just made the whole dynamic a little eh. not uncomfortable but i guess like annoying to watch because you know you want to see these two you know, be partners and be a superhero duo, but it seems like the superhero duo don't even fucking like each other. Or, like, don't res Like, it always felt like Marinette, well, Ladybug never really respected Cat Noir or really liked him in season one. And then you have Cat Noir who loves Ladybug but never, like, respects her boundaries and is always pining after her and is always coming off so strong and always flirting 24-7. So it's just a whole messy dynamic that, in my opinion, wasn't fun to watch. I know there's this whole thing about, oh, you see them, you know, they're gonna grow together and grow, you know, grow closer, which you do start to see a little bit starting in season two, but it's like... It just came off as uncomfortable because, not uncomfortable, as annoying because a lot of people really like um, Adrian slash Cat Noir in the show. And always, I know a lot of people always found him more interesting than Marinette and Ladybug. Because, I mean, Adrian's freaking father is the main villains. And, you know, it always seemed like he had the more interesting characterization and more interesting story. So I know a lot of people were always upset whenever Ladybug seemed to, like, never really respect him or care for him. And it also always seemed like Ladybug doesn't really even need Cat Noir. Like, she could really just save the day by herself. And it always felt like Cat Noir was a sidekick and not really important, despite being tied to the main villain. So I know that was really annoying for a lot of people. But here, I do like how they, right off the bat, emphasize that Ladybug and Cat Noir are a duo. They are stronger together. It is together that they are able to defeat the bad guys, that they are partners. They are not each other's sidekicks. They are each other's equals. Like, And I also like how the characters themselves like acknowledge this as well. Like You see in the beginning, in the first mission, um, Cat Noir refers to Ladybug as his sidekick. And then at the end, when Ladybug saves him saves him she's like not bad for a psychic hong and she does the whole hand thing and that's when cat noir kind of falls for her um it's kind of like a a mirror of the library scene earlier and then you see in their second mission um when they're working together again and saving the day at the end when alia who's marinette's friend and is also like a reporter on the superheroes acts Cat Noir, who are you? He's like, I'm just a sidekick. And and Ladybug corrects him and says, we're partners. And I just really, really like that. 
because it, it cuts out all the the drama and the annoyance that was with the show where it's like does ladybug even like like him or is she really just tolerating him because she's forced to work with him or anything like that and it, i like and it cuts out all the the possible talk about disrespect that ma- uh, that ladybug could choke at her like no she does respect him she sees him as his partner and they're equals and she likes doing it together with him like it, i just like how they cut that out like from this from the show because it was just really annoying in season one and it was kind of like ugh. anyway <laughs> oh the show is so annoying but anyway Oh yeah, I have a I have a careless whisper music. There's like a it's like the it's the it's the music that goes da 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 that one that was in the show. It just felt like so out of place compared to all the other like music in the show in in the music. I mean, in the movie in in this musical movie, it was like so ridiculous. And it happens twice, so I wrote it down. And then after their, so after their first mission, Adrian sings a little song. It's very short. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's that long. Probably only like a minute and a half or something. It's nice. It's short and nice. You know, it's very quick. I have, I have a comment that says a lot more French than the show. Um, it, it just felt like sometimes, like it felt to me like there was a lot more effort to make it very obvious that we are in fact in France. Like you see the carton of milk would say let and then you would see some um Parisians, they would say like, you know, French idioms and phrases in in the movie, where I felt like the only way in the show you would know that we are in France is at the Eiffel Towers in the background, but nothing else really seems very French. At least that's what it seemed like to me. Like it seemed like they're like, yeah, we're in France, but it doesn't really seem like it, where I felt like, yeah, I could really tell that we are in France in the movie. So, yeah, Adrian sings his song about love, and I love how he's, like, I love how he's, like, a typical tip, typical teenager in love, you know, he's kind of delusional, and Adrian is kind of, like, he doesn't really have a lot of experience in love, so he's like, ah, oh, you know, she was totally rocking with my style and everything, you know, like, I think she totally, like, is in love with me, too. She probably, t- like, it was just so ridiculous, but it's, like, something uh, an over-top teen who doesn't have much experience in, like, the love department would probably say, maybe, I have no idea. Teenage boys, we go back to Hawk Moth or Gabriel, and we see Nuru again. I like how Nuru isn't, like, a, I said Nuru isn't a pussy, because in the show, he was, like, very, very afraid and of, um, Gabriel and everything, and I like how here, he's more like, like a, like a cautionary type of genie, where he's like, I told you, master, this isn't gonna work, the miraculouses aren't supposed to be used this way, um, you can't do this, like, it seems more like Nuru is trying to, like, stand up for, like, how his miraculous should be used, as opposed to, like, in the show where Nuru kind of came off of this, like, scared slave type of character, which is kind of, which, I mean, so weird, because not, Gabriel wasn't really abusing these Kwamis or anything like that. I mean, there's not, I mean, they just get sucked into the, the accessories, and then he uses the powers, and then that's kind of it. So I like how in the movie, it does. I just like how I just like that Nuru isn't characterized that way and has a little bit more of a spine here, and, and it's kind of like that that a uh, magical figure who's like, "Hey, all power comes with a price." I'm warning you, kind of thing. So I do like that little change. Uh oh, and this is where the Hawk Moth uh song comes in, and I really, really like the Hawk Moth song. It's so good. <laughs> Like, who knew Keith Silverstein could sing? Because I didn't know that. I was totally caught off guard when I heard his voice. And I, I, I know I rewinded that song, like, three times. Because uh, especially the end, where he goes for, like, a high note. I was very impressed. That's definitely in the top three songs. So, so far, we have the Tiki song to the t- tune of the Miraculous theme song. And then we have the Keith Silverstein song, which is the Hawk Moth song, which is very, very good as well. After that, we get a second Marinette song which is basically supposed to be like her song where she fully accepts the superhero identity that she was given. And it kind of happens in the middle of, I kind of didn't like how it kind of happened in the middle of a fight 
like the the bad guys there's a magician and there's the mime character from the show i don't i don't remember the magician uh, villain being in the show but i do remember the mime villain being in the show and basically she's like oh my gosh i can't let this happen i have to do something and basically tiki's like are you ready to accept your responsibility marinette and then she has there's this whole song about her like i said fully accepting the alternate identity and it, 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 I remember I was watching it, I was like, I feel like this is kind of a little long because we're in the middle of a fight. So that was the only, so it kind of soured my, my impression of the song, but the song was all right itself, but I just didn't like the placement of it itself. So after that, after the, the second fight, this is the whole thing where they clarify that they're partners and then we get a montage happening where you just see Adrian and Merida hanging out together alone and also with Nino and Aglia. And then also you get a montage of Ladybug and Cat Noir fighting the various villains that Hawk Moth is sending after them. Um, it's a very cute montage. Like you see, one of them is you get an Adrianette scene with Adrian showing like Marinette a locket of him and his mom, which I think is very cute. And it's just another thing of of instance of Marinette being able to hang out with Adrian without stumbling all over herself like a ridiculous fool, which I really like. And you also see Adrian again opening up, getting out of his um depressive shell and hanging out with his friends. And another thing. And at the end of the montage, you see uh, Lady Noir just hanging out on a roof. This is another thing that I like. Like, now that, like, the timer isn't in place, and there isn't that big of an emphasis on uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir keeping their identities a secret from each other. And another instance, again, of them actually being friends and not, like, Ladybug kind of disliking cat noir and cat noir just being overbearing with his romantic feelings you see they're just on the roof having ice cream together giving each other fighting tips sparring together it's just so cute i really liked it because a big thing about the show is that oh it's so annoying it's always no we can't know each other's secret identity or it will literally destroy the world i like how jeremy zag just got rid of all that bullshit like it's like no we're superheroes and we're partners and we like each other you know we're friends and we we can hang out with each other after missions or if we just want to hang out and have ice cream or just spar and train with each other i really like how the movie really emphasized that sure there this is uh romance is a big part of this movie and their dynamic as well as them being superheroes as well and then them being friends is also a very important part of their dynamic as well like there isn't this back and forth or this long drawn out arc of them not respecting or disliking each other and then eventually coming together. It's like, no, we kind of got over that in the first mission. In the second mission, they're able to fully come together and and respect each other and see each other as partners, and that's how they're working together. And I just really like it. And then eventually we get a, again, the the third best song. Not Not like it's number three, but in the top three best songs of this film is the Lady Noir duet. It's very nice. Just to like give a little uh, background before I dive into it. Um, how this like all comes about. You see uh, Cat Noir sends uh, Ladybug a message to like, hey, come to this place because we need something. I need you for something. And she comes, she sees scratch marks on the on the tower, she sees his staff just on the floor, and so she thinks that Hawk Moth captured him, and, and she's, like, screaming, she's like, no, Kitty, where are you? And then Cat Noir is, like, just right above her in, like, the scaffolding, is like, aw, you do care about me. And she's like, I, I hate you, or whatever, but it's it's obviously a playful um jab. And then they go down, and it's the theater where Adrian's mom, Emily, used to perform. And this is another thing I like about the the Zag version of the Lady Noir dynamic. Because, again, in the show, there was this whole thing about, no, we can't know each other's identities and we can't know anything about each other, which I always thought is ridiculous. Like, I feel like there's a lot of superhero 
stories, like specifically in the West, where even if they don't know each other's secret identities like fully, they still know even like a little bit about each other. Like, like I can think of like the Justice League or uh the Young Justice cartoon where where they were friends. And only really Dick wasn't allowed to reveal a secret identity, but that doesn't mean they didn't know anything about Dick. Like they still hanged out with him. They were still friends and they still like helped him with his personal missions, like regarding the circus and everything. So I like how they they Jeremy Zach took this approach and was like, no, they can know stuff about each other. Even if they're not fully revealing their identities to each other, that doesn't mean they can't talk about personal stuff at all. So you see in the theater, Adrian is like, you know, I never brought anyone here after my mom died. And I promised myself I wouldn't ever get close to anyone. And you see um, Ladybug sympathize with him. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, Cat Noir. Like, I like how you see how much... They care about each other, and especially from Ladybug, because again, I'm kind of, I was kind of like hesitant from the show because it really seemed like Ladybug in the show in the beginning didn't like or care at all about Cat Noir. So I like how she does really does care about him and is like so is willing to listen to what he has to say and and willing to hear him open up about what he has gone through. And you see Adrian play a song for her on the piano because Adrian is classically trained. And then Adrian first starts out singing, and then Ladybug joins in as the whole duet, and they're just going through the city while the song is playing in the background. And then eventually they're up in the clouds, and they're like waltzing with each other, and it's so cute. And another thing that I like here it's um, how you can see that Ladybug does have feelings for Cat Noir, at least. Yeah, I mean, there's even a line in the song where she's like, this feeling it's interesting that i can't when i look at him i can't help but feel safe and i want to be near him something something i don't remember the line exactly but it's basically like yeah ladybug does have feelings for cat noir obviously she can't fully give it and that's how the song ends like cat noir tries to kiss her and then she has to pull back because there's already someone else in the picture like it's not the like again it's not like ladybug doesn't like I'm talking romantically here in this sense, doesn't like Cat Noir at all. Like, she obviously has some feelings for him, but she obviously can't fully give her heart to him because she's already given her heart to Adrian. I don't know if the reverse is true. Like, I don't know if Adrian at all before this instance had romantic feelings for Marinette. Again, this movie is mostly from Marinette's perspective. Like, we don't even see Cat Noir's first transformation. Um, in t- I mean Adrian's first transformation into Cat Noir, so and 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 we don't see much of Adrian's pers- perspective on a lot of things until the end, uh, towards the end of the film where things really start to get serious. So I can't really speak on whether or not Adrian reciprocated Marinette's feelings, but I do fully believe that Ladybug reciprocated. Uh, in in some instance, Cat Noir's feelings, but wasn't able to fully because obviously she, Marinette. Ladybug is in love with Adrian. So obviously Adrian gets upset by this. And I like how here, like, Marinette says, I, I, I'm I sorry. Like, she's very she's very sad about it. Like, she doesn't want to hurt his feelings because she cares about him and she has to leave and she says, I'm sorry I don't, I, I don't love you back because my heart is for someone else. And he's just like, but, you know, it could possibly grow between us. But then she leaves. And I like how he doesn't try to force it with her. Uh, a lot of times in the in the show, after after uh, Ladybug rejects Cat Noir's feelings, there would be some instances where Cat Noir gets really petty and kind of like runs off or gives her sad remarks. And he does that a little bit when he comes back, but it's not like it's not like I'm not like rolling my eyes. It's like I understand he's a little hurt, and he put his his heart out there on his sleeve. He put his whole heart out there and got rejected. So of course he's a little, little, he's a little jaded. But it it never came off as like, but it never came off as too petty. Where I just want to roll my eyes. It's like it's it's very understandable for him to be a little off put, and it, and it shakes their dynamic, and you can understand why. Uh, but when Marinette comes back 
she goes back to school. She wants to ask Adrian to the ball that's happening at the end of the year. And you see, and I just, this scene is also very cute in the beginning. Because you see Marinette, she's all like, all being all cutesy. And she's like, hey, Adrian. Hey. And, and poor Adrian, he's not really paying attention because of what happened last night. He has his head, his earbuds back in his ears. And he's kind of like not really paying attention. And... Like, this is something Marinette wouldn't be able to do, at least in the beginning, like, season one of Marinette. But you see Marinette actually asks him out to the ball, and Adrian is like, sorry, Marinette, there's someone else. And then poor Marinette, she throws the gift in the trash. Uh, young love. But but then Adrian, you see, he goes home, and oh my gosh, when Gabriel came down the stairs and he had that... I don't know if it's a five o'clock shout out. I don't know if that's the proper term for it. But he comes down the stairs and he's like, Adrian, where have you been? And then Adrian's like, oh, now you care where I am? He's like, well, you didn't. And the gamer's like, well, you didn't come home last night. I worry because I'm your father. And he and Adrian's like, I lost my father a long time ago. Like season one, Adrian, and probably also season two, Adrian, would never say these things. Like it was a big thing about how Adrian never really stands up to his father in the show so i like how here after getting like rejected in love and also you know having to reject marinette as well he's kind of just like lashing out which is a normal kid response and he's obviously lashing out at his dad who's also been basically rejecting him and not socializing with him at all and distancing himself from him after the death of um his mom and then his wife so I like how we were able to see that as opposed to in the show where it was like a big thing. It was like, when the hell is Adrian going to stand up to his dad? He also, we also get a like a, a sad Marinette song, which is also pretty good. I don't really remember it, to be honest. But um, like I said, none of the songs are bad in this film. There are just some that are better than others. And uh, Marinette has a sad song about... I honestly forgot what it was about. Probably It was probably about, you know hitting a roadblock when you're chasing your dreams or whatever the fuck. Ugh, I wish I could remember it. I remember it was like this ballad. Nah, I forgot. But trust me, it's good. Well, it's decent. It's not great. But it's good. I liked it. Oh my god. And then now we're nearing the end of the film and I really love how Hawk Moth becomes an actual threat in this movie. Hawk Moth never really seemed like a threat in, in the show. Um, there were times where Hawk Moth kind of popped off in the show, but I like how in the movie Hawk Moth just became kind of like a beast. And I do like, uh, he, I do like how he akumatized himself. That happens, um, I think that happens for the first time in season two, I believe. I think. But yeah, I love how he actually is like, okay, fine. I'm going to just akumatize myself. He's like, take me. He's like, you want a dark heart? And then he becomes like, there's like lava just that spews at his feet. He has like moth wings made out of his akumas. It's really, really cool. And I love how he just goes down on Paris and just torches it. And then you see Marinette. She's first on the scene as Ladybug. And she's looking at it. She's like, oh no, I cannot do anything here. <laughs> I like... I like how she can, she sees the situation. She, like, Paris is literally swimming in lava. She's like, okay, yeah, this is probably above me. And Cat Noir is also not there because Adrian is having a pity party in, in his room after, you know, not being so successful in love. Uh, eventually, Clagg drags him out of bed, and then eventually he does arrive on the scene. And this is where the little pettiness comes in. Like, you see their dynamic is really shaken after revealing their love to each other. Like, Marinette is about to get crushed by, like, I think, Rubble or something, and then Cat Noir comes in and saves her. And he's like, oh, looks like you needed me after all. And you see Marinette is happy at first, but then she's, you know, she's kind of a little upset that he's kind of late to the party. She's like, glad you showed up. And she was like, it's about time you showed up or something like that. He's like, couldn't your boyfriend just come and help? So obviously he's a little upset about that. But I do like, and then she's like, we're not talking about this now. You know, they're teenagers. They're, they're, they can be a little petty, but it's not eye rolling like how it was in the show sometimes. 
And then because their dynamic is shaken, Adrian just tries to fight Hawk Moth by itself. And because Marinette said that we can't win here. I don't I don't think this is beyond us. And then you see, um, and this is where we see Cataclysm for the very first time. You see Adrian run up the, the Eiffel Tower and uses Cataclysm to like hit Gabriel, but he knocks him to the to the not to the ground to the top of the the t- Eiffel Tower and you know the cataclysm was activated so it hits the Eiffel Tower and then the Eiffel Tower basically crumbles to the ground and then Adrian also falls into the like the river and gets hit in the head by the metal pieces that fell off and then Marina has to go and save him from fucking drowning basically I will say that the ending of this, like, once Hawk Moth comes onto the scene all akumatized himself and, like, super-powered, I will say, I th- in my opinion, this last part goes by really fast. Like, like Agent, um, Hawk Moth shows up, Ladybug shows up, um, gets saved by Cat Noir. Cat Noir tries to solo Hawk Moth, then, then Cat Noir falls, Ladybug has to save Cat Noir, and then this is where we have... The final, final battle where Hawk Moth is like about to like freaking go scorch Earth on these two, and I lo- and I love this little moment where Hawk Moth is like encroaching on them, and Ladybug and just pulled Cat Noir onto this floating piece of rubble. And she's like, "Don't touch him!" Like I just like how she was trying to protect him there. Very cute stuff. But yeah, I just felt like this last fight went by really, really quick. I would say this part about. Is rush the right word? Maybe. But what happened next was so cool because Marinette, then she tries to, like, fight Hawk Moth. And then, oh my gosh, Hawk Moth kind of, like, had her in, like, a force chokehold or something. Where she, like, it was like, I was like, damn, we're getting a little dark here. Like, we're literally, Paris is literally in a river of lava. And Marinette looks like her bones are creaking from Hawk Moth's force chokehold or whatever. And then he literally just pulls the earrings right off of her. And then they get sucked into, which is also uh very different from the show. Like, the earrings, them, uh, the ladybug earrings get, like, sucked into Gabriel's Hawk Moth, um... Moth Miraculous, which I thought was interesting. And then she actually detransforms right in front of him. And I was like, damn, holy shit. Like, we're already touching stuff that the show hasn't even touched on in, like, well, that the show never even touched until, like, probably the, the latest seasons. And then Hawk Moth tries to go after Cat Noir and tries to take his ring from him, but then Cat Noir kind of, like, gets a little out of out of his um unconsciousness and is able to pull the ring back to him and actually scratches him in the face like he actually like Gabriel has like a scar now which I thought was pretty cool as well and then he kind of forest lifts Cat Noir into the air and trying to like cuts him all over I was like damn it got really serious towards the end so I was really liking it I like when kids shows get a little dark sometimes like I think it kind of it's sometimes unexpected, but also very welcomed by me personally. And you so see the the Akumas actually like scratch up Cat Noir's mask, and then like half his face is showing, which is a very cool look because then you see Cat Noir with his half of his like regular you know Adrian face, but he still has the cat eyes because he's not fully detransformed. And I like how Ladybug kind of had her. If you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. Like, Iron Man slash Spider-Man moment, where Tiki was like, you are Ladybug. Like, after Marinette... Like, after Marinette is like, I need Ladybug, I can't do anything, Tiki is like, you are Ladybug. So, you see, before Adrian... Uh, before uh, Hawk Moth can, like, cut up Adrian even more, you see Adrian freaking stands up and, like, rescues Cat Noir from being, like, torn to shreds by the evil butterflies. And then she falls to the ground. So Marinette was able to have her moment there. But then, you know, it's not enough. But then it's not enough until Gabriel actually picks up Cat Noir again and, like, looks at his face and he's like, oh, Adrian? And this is, again, a thing about how Jeremy Zag has characterized Gabriel a lot better than Thomas Destruct did in the show. Because 
anyone who's a Miraculous fan knows the episode Cat Blanc. In Cat Blanc, um, Gabriel slash Hawkmoth finds out that Adrian is Cat Noir. And the first thing he does is try to reveal the secret about Emily being kind of like comatosed a bit kind of in his basement and also that he is hawk moth and then also tries to akumatize his son and give him the power of unlimited destruction and everything like that it's very insane and that's why there are like talks about oh gabriel does not really care about adrian at least not in a in any type of healthy or sympathetic way like he actually tries to use adrian and i remember i was trying to like look through some season five episodes just to see what was on uh what was available on disney plus i know the full season is out but what was available on disney plus or netflix and i saw there was this one episode like in the latest season gabriel's wearing like this full white outfit and i think it was an episode where adrian realizes that Marinette I think used to love him but doesn't anymore and so he's a little depressed so Gabriel goes up to him at first he he's in his hawk moth outfit and he's about to akumatize someone but then he realizes it's Adrian and but then he stops and I was like okay so maybe he actually won't try to akumatize Adrian but no no he went to Adrian and gave him like this alliance ring which is supposed to help I think, connect him to the Akumas or something. I forgot. And then he goes to Adrian's room. After he gives him the ring, he goes back to his hawk muff lair. And then it's like, oh, my son is depressed. I can use this and Akumatize him. And I was like, god damn it. Like, seriously? It, like, hawk muff has tried to, or Gabriel has tried to Akumatize Adrian multiple times in the show. And I like how here in the movie, after Gabriel or Hawk Moth realizes that it is Adrian who's Cat Noir, he stops immediately because that's his fucking son. He doesn't want to hurt him. Like he's doing all this for them. So I do like that change because in, in the show, it's just like, can Gabriel not do this to his own freaking flesh and blood? So I like how Jeremy Zach did change that in the movie. So you see um hawk moth released his transformation and then he goes back to just being gabriel i like how you see the scar on, over his eye and then oh my gosh i love this scene so much because then you see gabriel like oh my gosh my baby boy what have i done and then you see a oh my god this is another thing that was robbed from us in the show like in the show in season five eight um it's the end of the Hawk Moth arc, um gabriel i think gabriel like dies at the end of the season or whatever and Adrian never learns that his dad was fucking Hawk Moth, which I think is ridiculously stupid. Like, what are you talking about? So I like how Jeremy Zag was like, nah, we're doing this reveal. We're doing all the reveals in this movie. So I like how Adrian does actually get to find out that his dad is Hawk Moth. And he's like, dad, is that you? Like, all oh, this was because of you? But why? Like, I love how we got that because we were robbed then. She's fine. It happened, like, there were a few times where he found out, but, you know, it's it's miraculous. They reverse it and go back to status quo so that it never happens. So it's so annoying. But here, I like how we actually got that reveal. And Gabriel just straight up tells Adrian, like, I did this because I thought I could bring back your mother. And there's also this whole theme about not only are Ladybug and Cat Noir stronger together, but the ultimate power is love. Like like I said um, earlier, like a big theme of this show and a big aspect of it is the romance between Ladybug and Cat Noir, between Adrian and Marinette. And then also we have the love between father and son with Gabriel and Adrian. And you also have a little bit of um, a love aspect between Nino and Alia as well. Like, love is, romance is a big part of the show and the property in general. So I like how um, Gabriel's love for his son is what ultimately saved him in the end. And then you hear Gabriel's like, oh, son, I don't know if you can ever forgive me. And I do like how Adrian does forgive him. He's like, you have to let her go, dad. You know, because they still have each other. And then they, and then Adrian hugs him, and it's so sweet. And then you see Emily, this, like, ghost, come and hug them as well. I was a little like, I was like, what the fuck? But it's okay. 
I get it. I get it, Jeremy Zach. It's a little like, okay, but it's like, okay, we get it. But I liked it. And then I think there's also like purified Akumas um, fluttering around them as well. And it's just a very beautiful scene. And then you see uh, the earrings get um, get back to Marinette. So she's able to retransform into her ladybug form and she gets Tiki back and everything. And then this is, Master Fu also shows up near the end. And tells, like, Marinette that she's able to fix this. And that's when Marinette, uh, Ladybug, uses her her miraculous Ladybug power. But instead of throwing the Lucky Charmed object into the air, she kind of, like, gathers the energy. It seems like she's gathered, she gathers the, like, the love energy from the the people of Paris. And then is able to use that to, like, fix all the buildings and, like... They basically fix Paris, fix the of power, and just basically return everything to the status quo in the sense of, you know, the buildings. Not necessarily what happened. We're not getting any Uno reverse going on here in this movie. So the movie basically ends with with the the ball that was mentioned earlier in the movie. And you see Marinette, she shows up in her in a ladybug dress that um she designed herself, which is very beautiful. And then Adrian is outside near like, I think like a lamp post looking over his ring. And he's like, I'm going to miss you so much, Mar- uh, Ladybug. And then Marinette shows up and is like Cat Noir. And then Lady, and oh my God, all these names. Because the Adrian, Ladybug, Cat Noir, Marinette thing is all twisting near the end. But Marinette shows up as like Cat Noir. And then Adrian perks up because he's like, whoa, who's that? And he sees that it's Marinette. And I like I love how we got the identity reveal. The identity reveal is also something that has been dragged out in the show. Like I still don't think it happened yet. I haven't watched season five the whole way through, so I'm not entirely sure. I Marinette was able to find out who Hawkmoth really was, but and I'm not sure if Hawkmoth found out who she was. I, it doesn't really matter because he's dead. And I still don't think um, Ladybug and Kanoir know each other's identities either in the show yet. But here we get the identity reveal because obviously Marinette saw that not only is Hawkmoth is Gabriel, but also that Cat Noir is Adrian. So she knows who he is and she goes to meet him and she's like, you can call me Ladybug. And then you see Adrian, he's like so happy and he's to the point that he's crying that he gets to like see his love again and not only that but it's also someone he already had a friendship with i also like how marinette uh took the mask from from adrian's face and put it on herself to like help adrian visualize it for her whatever it was just so cute and then they um they dance a little bit and then they go in for a kiss we don't actually see them lip lock because it goes the end you know title um end screen so, you know, we're a little blue bold at the end. But it was overall very cute. And I really, I'm really glad we got the identity reveal. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Like, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely feel like I can watch it another time and listen to the songs again. Maybe download some of the songs as well. At least those top three that I really liked. And I really... Oh, yeah, 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 no, I forgot. There's, like, a, I don't know if it's a post credit scene, but there is one last scene that happens where there's, like, a voiceover of Gabriel saying, Natalie, I'm entrusting you with the secret, and then you see Natalie go into the secret underground basement, and you find Emily on, uh, like, a bed of roses, and she has the peacock miraculous around her neck, and the miraculous fan knows that Natalie eventually becomes the holder or at least temporarily or once in a while from time to time becomes the holder of the Peacock Miraculous and becomes Mayura. I believe I believe that's not, that's what her name is, Mayura or something like that. And there's this whole thing about the Peacock Miraculous's abilities and everything. I don't know if that's going to change, but I'm really hoping there's a sequel because I really enjoyed this movie and I would really like uh, a sequel because I feel like, I think one of the reasons why, um, I think Thomas might have even said this himself, that the identity reveal, um, any identity reveal really has been dragged out for so long is for so long is because that's the only way to keep the show going. But I feel like that's not like true. Like how a big aspect of 
of the the miraculous ladybug show is that their identities are secret which is true for like in the beginning but i feel like you could still do at least another story or another arc even after they know everything about each other like it's not just about the secret identities like it's they're also you know they're fucking superheroes and they're in love with each other like you can still do stuff with that and there's you know they're teenagers and now there's like a possible second villain with natalie and you still have emily who's asleep like it's it doesn't have to all end there because the the initial and primary mystery of your property has been resolved like it doesn't mean that there's no more stories to tell of course if you don't have any stories in your mind to tell like the storyteller doesn't have anything that they thought of past that point then of course then the story ends there but if they are able to think about more stuff and um continue the story even after the main plot is resolved in a way that keeps up the quality of the of the property then yeah then continue on like there's could still be more to tell if if you have a story in mind so the whole thing about oh no but that's like the only thing that keeps people coming back and it's like maybe in the beginning but people were getting really tired of it towards the end they were like when are we ever gonna have our identity reveal that's just gonna stick like when is someone gonna find out that hawk moth is gabriel when is um Marinette and Adrian gonna learn each other's identities. And there's like not only was the identity reveals just dragged out for so long, but also Thomas Struck was always giving these excuses in the in the show where it was like, Oh no, if they reveal each other's identities, then the whole world's gonna end. And that's like that's so stupid. Like, you really think like why do we have to end these world ending stakes on them? Like like in the like in the movie itself, like like Adrian and Gabriel learning each other's alternate identities is what basically helped save Paris from like the chaos that Hawk Moth was was conjuring up. And also it was that and it was also the secret itself um about Ladybug and Kanoar loving each other but not really knowing it that, you know, drove them apart in the first place and kind of ruined their dynamic um their synergy in the end so it's like you know it's just so annoying it's like they want to drag it out and then they give this ridiculous excuse why they can never know each other's identities and it just makes it a frustrating watch like you can go past this which is something i really like about young justice how they do know each other's secret identities and of course it could always be used against them but that could also just be used as a, a plot point in the story. But like the reason why Young Justice was so like that team itself was so connected and worked so well was because they knew a lot about each other and they knew each other's insecurities, their faults, their flaws, their strengths, and you know, some of their personal lives as well and what they went through in their past lives. Like knowing each other's secret identities doesn't have to spell the end of the world like there can be more stuff that could evolve from the mystery unraveling or just not having the mystery at all um some thoughts of what i thought the sh the movie was missing like i personally really out of like tiki and plague plague is um adrian's kwame um there wasn't a lot of plague and what there was a plague it was mostly just him farting and eating sticky cheese there's more tiki in the film uh, which is a shame because I do. I've always really liked Plague over Tiki in the in the show, and I've always liked uh, Plague and Adrian's dynamic. How you see that Plague he can come off a little aloof sometimes, but you see that he really does care a lot about Adrian. And we didn't really get much of that in in the movie. Again, what what, what we also didn't get much of was Adrian himself, like mostly as Adrian. Like we got a lot of Cat Noir, but as adrian himself we didn't really get a lot of that and i've always again in the show i've always liked adrian more than marinette because i felt like he always had the more interesting story so it was kind of a shame that we didn't get a lot of adrian um as adrian and really got more just short snippets and scenes of his life and what he was going through um outside of the mask so which would be nice to see that expanded upon well it can't be expanded on upon in the same instance because he already knows 
that Gabriel is Hawkmaw, so you can't really expand more upon that in the same way. But it would be nice to have a little more Adrian if there is a second film in the second film. Also, I'm wondering, so like then, and also the whole of Paris know that Gabriel and Hawk Moth are one. So did like Hawk Moth go to jail? Like we we never saw him get like put in a police car and then like get shipped off to like whatever Rikers they have. Um, I was kind of looking for that. I was like, wait a second, what happened to Hawk Moth? So I assume he's in jail now. Um, I guess that's can be something that someone you could play with in the second movie. Is like, like Adrian's dad is like in fucking jail. <laughs> At least I think he is. He's not in the house anymore. But yeah, I'm. I really hope there's a second movie. I haven't heard anything about a second movie, but I welcome it. Um, I hope there is one. I hope Jeremy Zag. I mean, he teased something at the end with the whole Natalie and the Peacock Marcus at the end of the movie. So I, I assume he has ideas for a sequel. Um, but who knows if they will ever be fulfilled? I mean, this movie itself got delayed multiple times. Um, so I hope. I hope there is a second movie, and I hope. Um, it, I was, I was thinking to myself, like, if this, if Jeremy Zag's version of Miraculous was a series, I would totally watch it over Thomas Destruct's version of Miraculous, because I just like this version so much better. If I could think, maybe we can make this a duology. Um, I don't know if there's enough for a trilogy, because they just wrapped up the, 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 the Gabriel, uh, Hawkmoth arc. So who knows what the season six and seven and eight and nine is going to be about. And the the Peacock Miraculous and Natalie being the holder was like weaved into alongside the whole Gabriel stuff. Well, it seems like for this, if there is a sequel, it's going to be its own like separate arc, separate villain type of thing. So maybe this Jeremy Zach's interpretation of Miraculous could be a duology or maybe even a trilogy. I don't know what the trilogy, a third movie would look like, but I do think there is room for a second movie at least. And I hope there is one. That's all my thoughts on Miraculous Awakening. I really enjoyed it. I totally recommend it. I'm not going to give a uh, an official rating or anything. I'm not going to say how many stars I would rate this. I would just say that I enjoyed the movie and I would totally recommend it to anyone who's a fan of Miraculous Ladybug or used to be a fan of Miraculous Ladybug and is looking for a, a, a fresher take on the series and the property. I would totally recommend this. I think it's a fun movie. It's a fun kids film as well. Um, I think it was in the top 10 on Netflix last time I checked. I think it did make it on the top 10 list, which I think it's totally deserved. It's, it, it's fun. It's fun. Like I enjoyed my time. I would definitely watch it a second time. But uh, yeah, that's how I think that's how I should do it from now on. Because sometimes ratings can be so either arbitrary or I don't know. Sometimes you just don't know how to place something in terms of a solid rating. So yeah, I liked it. I think other people will like it, and I recommend it. That's all I got to say about that. I'm trying to think about what is the next property I should do. Um, by the time I'm recording this, like next week is gonna be the Fontaine stuff in Genshin Impact, and I really, really want to do a uh, episode about the Archon Quest and what's going on there. Um, so that's probably what I'll focus on for the next episode of this podcast. But uh, we'll see. It's definitely gonna be different. It'll, it'll be the first video game episode I do, so I'll see have to ha- how I'm gonna. And Genshin is in in itself very long. So I'll see how I how I break down that episode in a podcast format. That's not like five freaking hours long, but we'll see. But that's what I'm eyeing for a next episode. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to Fontaine, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>